Zambia's former First Lady, Maureen Manawasa, wife of the third Zambian president, Levi Manawasa, who served from 2002 until his death in 2008, has died herself at the age of 61 a few days ago in the capital Lusaka after a short illness. President Hachalima described Maureen Manawasa's death as a deep shock. Trained as a lawyer, Ms. Manawasa was an active advocate for social justice, community development, and public health issues. She co-owned a law firm with her husband until he entered politics and was actively involved in her husband's successful presidential bid in 2001. Before her husband's death in 2008, she was considered a potential candidate to succeed him, but after he died, she did not run for the highest office of Zambia. However, in 2016, Ms. Manawasa was a strong candidate as mayor of Lusaka. She was a founding member and former president of the Organization of African First Ladies Against HIV and AIDS, currently known as the Organization of African First Ladies for Development. Her efforts in community development earned her several awards, including the International Hope Award for World Vision in 2006. Her accolades are many, including a degree in law from the University of Zambia, Postgraduate Studies, Institute for Advanced Legal Studies, a Master's in International Business Administration from Edith Cowan University. She founded Maureen Manawasa Community Initiative. She was a member of the board of the Australian Institute of Business Trust. She was a law member of the board in Zambia. She was an Australia Institute, a part of the Australia Institute Business Trust, Law Association of Zambia the Zambia Association for High Value Crops. She was a, a part of the Female Lawyers Association in Zambia, the Women Law Associ Society of the UK, Zambia Women Football Association, and a council member, Women's Rights Committee. Other recipient of awards include the John Thompson Legacy of a Dream Award from Georgetown University in 2007. She was also chairperson and founder of the Marie Monawasa Community Initiative, MMCI. Today we have four very close friends of our Honorable Maureen Manawasa, who will share some memories and experiences in memoriam of her on Tandala with Dr. Ayan. Episode of Tandala with Dr. Ayan. Today I am here with four close friends, uh, a personal friend, including uh, me, uh, the Honorable Maureen Manawasa, who recently passed away. And all of us have something personal to share, and we wanted to uh, devote this show to her um, and, and share a lot of wonderful memories um, that we can share with the public about who she was. Um, she was the third First Lady of Zambia the third mama of Zambia. And um, let's get started with four of her friends, one including uh, one of her teachers. We have Joyce here, we have Peggy over here, we have Anne over there, and then we have uh, Mama Daphne over there. So let's start off with the general question, uh, sisters and ladies. How, did, how do you know uh, Honorable Maureen? How did you get to know her? And how long have you known her? Let's start with you, Mama Daphne. Thank you. I got to know Maureen in 1977 when she came to St. Mary's as a, a Form 1 student. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, she was a very small girl, very shy. Um, but I watched her blossom into the beautiful girl that she became later on in life. And uh, by coincidence, when she got married, she moved to Ndola, where I was working as a, a deputy head in one of the secondary schools there. And uh, she was my neighbor. We were just separated by war fence. Then from there, again, we came and reconnected here in Lusaka, when we moved to Lusaka ourselves in 1994, uh, they shortly um, before that, I think, they moved before us mm -hmm. uh, into Lusaka. So I've known, I've known her from 1977. Since she was a child. Since she, was, she was a child, yes. Since okay. she was a child. That's yeah. good to know. And Anna? 
Uh, I think like um, Daphne has said, I've also known her since 1977. I actually went to, to St. Mary's also as a student in 1976, I was in, in Form 1, and when she came in, uh, in Form 1 in 1977, that was the first time that I met her. And um, um, indeed, she was uh, very tiny, you know, and uh, somebody that just went about her business quite reserved at the time, <laughs> until later on, I think, when she settled down. Then uh, we reconnected again in later life when uh, I think we were both married and uh, young, young wives, mm -hmm. and that's when we, we then met, and it was, it was quite... Um, quite a good reunion because we really had lost touch. You know, those days there were no cell phones and if, if you just happened to bump into each other and to find out where your friend was working, yeah. that's when you'd reconnect and begin to chat every so often. Yeah. You've known her a long time as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peggy? Um, it's basically the same story. Um, I met Maureen in the 70s. We lived on the same street mm -hmm. in Livingston, but our connection was when I went to school in 1976, um, St. Mary's. I went to St. Mary's together with um, um, Joyce here and, and Anne. Yeah. And um, I remember Maureen as this very tiny girl with very thick glasses, <laughs> with a metallic frame, <laughs> and who went about her business very quietly. But I forget, and I always forget this part, but each time we met, she would almost embarrass me when we met amongst other people, and she would always introduce me that, this one, this one used to protect me. Nobody could bully me when Peggy was around. It's more or less like I was her protector, yeah. and more or less like I was the bully. And, yeah. you know, so that was, <laughs> yeah, that was Maureen, but then later on in life, um, yes, she moved to Lola, and her husband went into politics. And when they moved to Lusaka, we hosted them and uh, had a party for them, a welcome party with her husband. Mm -hmm. My late husband was a politician. Mm -hmm. And much, much later mm -hmm. in life, we would reconnect in a lot of different um, um, uh, 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 groupings. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, she was a, a, a lawyer. I became a lawyer and would meet in the legal profession. And um, she volunteered for cancer, mm -hmm. the Breakthrough Cancer Trust. And I'm a cancer survivor, and I also volunteer for cancer. Mm -hmm. So she was, she's been our patron, actually, from the time she became um, First Lady. Yeah. Yes. Wonderful. And then later on, she joined our church. And we've been members mm -hmm. of basically almost like the same church. And she's been a part of your life since when you were young up until yes. the time of her demise. And, and Joyce. <coughs> Maureen was a good friend. Mm -hmm. We shared a lot of things at school. Mm -hmm. I remember the time when we were actually day scholars. We walked together home and we shared a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Until at the time, where she, when she was, when we became brothers. Yeah. And she was a very intelligent girl and a house captain from Lungushi, the house where I was. And when she became a prefect, they gave her a, a room where she could actually stay as the, a, a captain. And then we moved in together. We were staying in that cabin together. We shared a lot of things. And uh, well, she was intelligent. And the sisters used her a lot to do a lot of things, to be in Mikado. They also used her for public speak, uh, speaking because she was very articulate and confident. Yeah. That I can definitely uh, agree with. Thank you for sharing your earlier connection with her. Uh, I'll share um, how I'm connected. So I only met her last year, mm -hmm. and uh, we bonded over being widows, um, and we also bonded over 
the big gap, age gap between our late husbands <laughs> and ourselves. And one thing I, I got to learn about Maureen, she was very effervescent, she was very humble. And um, she, she was a bit of a comedian also, and um, very practical. Because even after we met, um, I would run into her at these little odd shops every once in a while, like the Chinese shop. And she, she would purchase things at a, at a bargain, just like everyone else. Um, but as, as I agree with all of you, she was very intelligent. I mean, she was a lawyer by profession, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, she ran a lot of uh, NGOs. Um, clearly, uh, an important and active first lady when uh, or her husband, the late uh, President Levi Manawasa, was, uh, was ruling. Um, so let's fast forward some years, now that, now that you, you, you clarified how you knew her and a little bit about when she was a child. What was the, the time of, of her being First Lady like? What has she shared with you that the public normally would not know about? The highs and the lows, mm -hmm. anything fun or unique she shared with you and some of the challenges she faced as First Lady? I think, let me go first. Um, <laughs> when I was deputy head at uh, St. Mary's, you know, I, I went to St. Mary's as a student. I completed, and after training, the nuns recalled me. I connected with the girls. It was not a teacher-pupil relationship. It was like, they were, because I was a very young teacher. They were like my little sisters. Eh? Yeah. And uh, I was very free with them, very, very free with them. One thing that uh, um, remains stuck in my mind about Maureen is her assertiveness mm -hmm. and uh, her confidence. You know, she, at the time they were in school, these young ladies, she used to belong to Jehovah's Witness. And this school where she went to was a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. But like Joy said, the sisters used her a lot because of her nature, you know, her um, outgoing nature. She even used to read in the Catholic church, something that you would not, <laughs> that was not common, you know, because the Catholic and Jehovah's Witness, their philosophies uh, differ a little. And uh, you would find that, a, you know, a Catholic would not go and read in a Jehovah's Witness church and vice versa. But this Maureen used to read in the Catholic Church. Now, during that time, uh, I used to tell them, you girls, you behave like cockroaches. <laughs> because uh, you are very quiet when there's a teacher there, you are very well behaved. But the minute a teacher walks out, you would be all over the place, jumping on desks and making noise. And the minute the teacher walks in, you would all sit down and pretend you are so I said, that is the behavior of cockroaches. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that caught on, yeah. you know, for years. It's caught on to this day. When I meet these girls, the <laughs> first thing they would say is cockroaches. <laughs> 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 so when I was deputy head at uh, Chifu Secondary School, um, just before the 1991 elections, we already knew uh, Levi Mwanawasa would be the vice president of this country because he was vice president of the MMD. Now one day we see these vehicles coming into the school where I was teaching and my head, I was deputy head then, my head came and said, oh, the future vice president has come. So we all walked out and welcomed him. We went to the staff room and then he said, oh, I have not come in my official capacity. I've just brought my wife so that Mrs. Chimuka can see her cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> so he knew the story as well. <laughs> so it, it's, a, it's a word that I think um, because of the relationship I had with the girls at St. Mary's, I sort of... It sort of grew into me. When I went to Dominican Convent um, as a teacher there, one day I called one girl, I said, can you sit down, you cockroach? 
it became a big issue. She went and told her father, and the father came, you called my daughter. I said it wasn't said out of malice. Mm. It's an endearment. Yeah. The girls of St. Mary's, you know, when they hear it, they feel yeah. connected to, yeah. to me. So from that time, each time we met, even at a function, no matter how important that function is, Maureen would stand up and say, <laughs> 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 what would Mrs. Chimuka, I remember once we had a, a, a fundraising dinner at the officer's mess in um, Chamber Valley. Mm. And she came in late. The function was supposed to have started at 20 hours. But the handlers kept telling her, don't come yet. The crowd is not yet big. Okay. By the time she came, it was about 21 hours. And the minute she came in, she said, if we were at St. Mary's, and Mrs. and Miss Nawa, then I was called Miss Nawa. Miss Nawa was, what would she have said? And the whole whole just shouted, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the relationship I had with, yeah. uh, with Maureen. And uh, later on in life, I moved from education and started working with an NGO called Forum for African Women Educationalists. Mm -hmm. We were promoting girls' education. It was the time when she became the first lady, and she was running an NGO called uh, Maureen Manawasa, uh, MMCI, a mm -hmm. uh, community mm -hmm. initiative. Mm -hmm. they, our offices were just one street from each other. Yeah. She came to see me and said, because you are already running a program that is giving scholarships to the girls, mm -hmm. instead of us reversing the wheel, and uh, give out these scholarships. Why don't we give the money to you for scholarships? So that you, you give and we focus on the women, empowerment of women. They were buying gods and uh, chickens for women. So that again became a renewed relationship okay. with, uh, okay. with Maureen. Yeah. That's a great memory. Thank you so mm. much for, mm. for uh, sharing that. Um, Anna, do you remember anything that she might have shared with you in conference that you can share with us? Mm. Um, when she lost her husband, when, when President Levy Manawasa passed away? Unfortunately, <laughs> at the time that she lost her husband, I was living abroad. So I only came to, to see her later after the fact. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to share is also um, 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 picking up from what um, Mrs. Chimuka has said. She had a passion for the empowerment of women. And um, currently, I, I work for um, a non-governmental gender organization, Coordinating yeah. Council, yeah. and she was actually on our board of trustees for about five years, up to the, up to 2001, yeah. when she became um, first lady. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and and that really shows you, you know, that um, there she was working with the girl child, yeah. and then she came to to NJCC, and that is um, a position by invitation. Mm -hmm. So there was something that uh, people saw in her mm -hmm. to invite her, you know, onto the board of trustees. But I'd just like to share w one thing about Maureen and, and the time that, she, you know, just before she became first lady. The one thing about Maureen, which I think everybody will agree about, is that her lifting up to become first lady didn't change her personality. Mm. Yes. It didn't change her humility mm -hmm. and her, her openness and, 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 and capacity to embrace people. Mm -hmm. I remember just before she, she, uh, she was um, vice, a vice president's wife, I was driving along what is called Kamloops, and I saw some, I just heard somebody, she had this habit, you know, she was a, a free spirit. <laughs> and they were stopped, she was coming the opposite direction. So we turned around and went to park at, um, at the feeling, there was a feeling station there, which is closed now. And uh, I, I knew she wanted to tell me something, but you know, she was, and what she wanted to tell me was that her husband was coming into that position and all, but later on she told yeah. me that's what she wanted to tell me. But what I want to say is, that action of stop, stop on the street, that was Maureen. Mm. She always connected with people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when she went into State House, that didn't change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. we can tell a lot of stories about how State House was free for in, all of us to walk in. <laughs> yeah, endless inside. stories. Endless That's story. what she was. Yeah. 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 And speaking of our NGOs, uh, I, I did uh, learn that she even won some awards, including a World Vision Award for mm -hmm. one of the nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. initiatives that she mm -hmm. was doing. Mm -hmm. um, so. Um, Peggy or um, Joyce, do you remember anything that she may have shared with you as a close friend about what she might have been going through, what it was like for her to, to not only lose her husband, um, 
but also to see that the leader of Zambia now was, was gone. Mm -hmm. what, was, what was that experience uh, for her life that she shared with you guys, you two, as close friends and mm -hmm. sisters? I think Joyce can speak about yeah. that. When she lost her husband, she became a hero for her children. She really wanted to educate them, and also she wanted to take care of her family, as in the Kakuos and all the people who surrounded her. Yeah. So she had a huge responsibility to work with her children yeah. and also to work with the relatives. Yeah. It was a big bl blow for her, but somehow she managed to have a break. Very good. So in all the things that she accomplished, and we just touched on a few things here and there, there's so many things that she's done, mm -hmm. even, even lead, leading up to her demise. And she had such humility that she didn't boast about any of this. Mm -hmm. And she was, she was an everyday person. People would still recognize mm -hmm. her. I always called her Honorable Maureen, because we, when we come from the States and you have a high position, you have that high position mm -hmm. in title for the rest mm -hmm. of your life, mm -hmm. whether you're in that role or not. And, mm -hmm. and she deserved that title in front of her name. Um, what were some challenges, I know that there were challenges that existed, legal issues that she was facing and so forth, but she was still very graceful about it. Um, anybody, any one of you want to chime in uh, on that, what it was like for her as a woman dealing with that and, and what she might have shared with you about it? No? One of the first thing to say is, one thing about Maureen was that in all that, she maintained her grace, mm -hmm. she maintained her dignity, mm -hmm. and even with us as friends, in fact, we're talking about it, I think, with, I think Pe with you, Peggy, mm -hmm. just a few days ago, that even when she went through that, and we met, because we, the things that we do together, mm -hmm. she, she would not, she, she would not look as though she was depressed. Mm -hmm. We never saw her, even at the, at the, at the, you know, the, the, the apex of those issues, you know, when they were all blown out in the paper. Yeah. We never saw her look depressed. She was her usual self. She took everything in her stride. I think around those issues, that's the first observation, and we actually were discussing it just, uh, yeah. just last night, we were talking mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was very strong through that. And, and uh, my uh, the colleagues will say, what, uh, might say something else, but she, it looked like, um, sh it was like, yes, this is happening, this is what people are saying, but life will go on. Mm -hmm. She was very mm -hmm. graceful about it. There's mm -hmm. one story she did share with me, and, and, and it's, it was public, so this is why I'll, I'll retell it. Mm -hmm. um, shortly after her husband passed away, um, people tried to destroy her name, whether it was for, um, out of spite of, for her husband, who was anti-corruption. I think he was even working on um, strengthening more the Constitution, and he, he just, he was firm in the rule of law, and so they both had uh, a law background. But what she shared was, bef before she could even fully mourn the death of her husband, people were trying to destroy the legacy of what they built together. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things she um, shared is that um, on one of her properties, uh, they put like some somebody or some powers that be, put all these big screen TVs in her uh, yard, and and to just to, to put a question mark in people's minds, saying, "What is she doing with all those? What, what is she going to do with all those TVs? And who, mm. who would do that?" And so she didn't even have time really to mourn. So um, what I've come to realize, you know, I've come from the journalism world. I'm, I'm American, as you can can hear. I'm also uh, Somali. Um, but one of the things I learned quickly while being here four years, going on five is that there seems to be um, an integration between, and sometimes not in a good way, between the business Zambia and the political Zambia. Mm. You understand? And sometimes that's not a good mix. You mm -hmm. understand? So I'll leave mm -hmm. it at that. And I think in between you all <laughs> can understand what it is <laughs> yeah, that I'm yeah. trying to say. But she yeah. didn't deserve that. She was a beautiful soul, mm. yes. a beautiful woman, mm. full of mm. strength. Mm. Um, and. I, ironically, this month I was to do an interview on her. I, I, I kid you not, the people in the studio know it too. 
Um, I spoke to her and communicated with her about three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. High spirit, happy. I never even knew that she was ill. Um, she never shared that part with me. Maybe she didn't want people to, to worry. But I'm, I'm still at a loss in, in disbelief that she's gone. Mm. Um, because when I talked to her, she was absolutely fine. Mm. <laughs> absolutely fine. And so we have um, a few more minutes, and let's, let's get in. What is the absolute pillar pinnacle a story that you can share about Honorable Maureen, your friend, your I, sister? Let me... I didn't say much, and let me just share this, this one on her humility and her simplicity. Um, at the first sitting of parliament, when her husband was vice president, the first sitting, that was the official opening of parliament. Um, my husband was an MP. I went to attend the official opening. The previous day, I had gone into town and shopped and bought this outfit. And at the parliament, I asked to see the vice president's wife. And they ushered me to the vice president's office at parliament. And I walked in, and there was Maureen sitting there wearing exactly <laughs> the same outfit that I was wearing. And I said to her, but look, she just got up and laughed and said, no, but one of us has to go home to change. Uh -huh. <laughs> we can't, you know, we can't, we can't just come out like this and mm. we're wearing exactly the same mm -hmm. clothes. So do you know that she opted to go? She opted to go and change and came back. Mm. Now, honestly, this is the vice president's mm. wife. Mm. And she did that. That is how humble mm. Maureen was. And she loved uplifting other women yes. as well. Oh, yeah. Yes. They did. I said they did. earlier that um, she volunteered for cancer. We had, or oh, we have an annual event at the Cancer Diseases Hospital. Every year we do a party for the patients and their caregivers. Maureen would turn up, every year she would turn up at six in the morning to come and pack hampers for the patients and their caregivers, and she would be there the whole day. That was Maureen. Thank you so much for sharing that. Anne, do you have a story you'd like to share? Yeah, um, uh, one is most recent, the last time I saw her. Um, I saw her in terms of, you know, when she was walking, but um, one is, you know, I was in Mukuma Hotel <laughs> in, in uh, is it Dola? Is it Mukuma? In, in Dola. In, in Dola. <laughs> I just had my breakfast. And as I was walking out, I just said, and anybody who calls me by my maiden name, I know we're together at school. Mm. <laughs> and she was vice president's wife there with her guards and all. I just said, I'm there! <laughs> and then that's in the restaurant. <laughs> 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 that's just how, you know, she was so simple. So I turned around and there she was, you know, and we, mm. we, we, we had a good chat. But, you know, at the time she was um, in the first lady. My husband was a politician too, but in opposition. She didn't care. Each, each time they met at functions, and I wasn't living in the country then, but I would always get a call from my husband. You know, just when I shook her hand, she had to talk to me for about two minutes, just to inquire how we are doing, how the children are doing, mm -hmm. and that was her. Then uh, the other story is just that, you know, a few, a few, actually on the 13th of July, we had our uh, former St. Mary's girl, uh, Girls General Assembly. She wasn't feeling too well, but she came in the morning, was there on time, and stayed until the until end. The we end. Mm. were sitting on the same bench, right next to, to each other, all through that event, and uh, Mama Dustin was right in front of us. Mm. Not feeling well, but that was the level of her commitment. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mama Dustin? One of the issues that I remember is, uh, again, when I was working for Faweza, she got a donation of um, computers from Stanchat. And they were kept at uh, State House. There's a structure there uh, in front of Mkwazi House where all these uh, things were kept. So she told me to come and get some for the schools that we were working with. So I went with the driver and we were allowed in. But by then they had moved out of Mkwazi House and they were living in the other house. What is it called? It's called the President where they were living, not in the, the guest house. The guest house, yes. So 
I was standing there waiting for someone to come and open the storeroom and give me the computers. Yeah. And I saw her coming. First, there was a, a, a sweeper car yeah. within State House going towards the uh, State House. So I noticed it was her. So I started walking towards the roads. I didn't know <laughs> there were security issues. So I started walking towards the road to go and greet her. And she saw me, and I think she told the people to stop. So they slowed down, and then her handler said, no, this is a security risk. So they drove off. Mm -hmm. A few minutes later, the, uh, someone came from, from State House, some security, and said, who are you? So I said, D did you ask her who I am? He said, no, 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 we are security. They just told us that that woman was walking towards the first lady's, <laughs> the first lady's <laughs> car. So I said, I was her teacher, and uh, I know her from there. And I will, I will come here because she invited me to come. Uh, so they, they let me off the hook. <laughs> but uh, you know what, what struck me was, you know, she could have driven past, but she slowed mm. down, and I waved to her, but then I think the security people said, you know, if you can't stop because we have not, uh, we don't know who she is, and they drove off. Um, so, yeah, I just want to agree with these young ladies that uh, she was a very humble person. She was a very accommodating person. She's uh, one person who kept a relationship, who kept this relationship to her death. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Thank you, Patricia. Mm. And, and Joyce, you have Well, what I could say is uh, she was a friend to the family. Yeah. And every person at St. Mary's had a special relationship with her. Yeah. So all of them have something to say. Okay. But what I would say that she was a loving soul. Yeah. She was selfless. Yeah. And even when she was in state house, she invited us to go there. No matter how difficult the security was, we found ourselves there. In the last month, she, she was about to go. She accepted Jesus as a personal savior, and she was baptized at Twin Palm, uh, Twin Palm Church, mm -hmm. and she invited me to say, come. I'm going to be baptized. And we were together. And after that, we went to our home and we celebrated their life. I'm telling you that she is with the Lord because she accepted God as mm. a personal savior. Mm. 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 And Abhagi? Yes. Um, I think Annie earlier had also talked about her adaptability. And since Joyce has talked about her faith, um, I just wish to share this. Um, when her husband became the candidate for MLD, um, because they were both Jehovah's Witnesses, and Jehovah's Witnesses do not do politics, they were excluded from the church. Mm -hmm. And so he started um, coming to Twin Palm Baptist Church, which is where I belong. So she stayed at home meanwhile, mm -hmm. and she would read the Bible at home. At least that's what he said. Mm -hmm. And he asked me on one of the days um, that we met, he asked me to speak to her. He said, talk to your friend. Mm -hmm. Ask her to come and join, because for her to read the Bible at home is not helping her. So our children went to the same school at Jengelo. So once and twice we would bump into each other and I would say to her, Maureen, the boss has said, the minute I say the boss has said, she'll just burst out laughing and she'll say, me like a ne, leave me alone. <laughs> but um, after her husband died, on her own, she came to the church and she has grown her faith and she has become a member of that church. And like Joyce said, she got baptized. And um, we are confident that she's mm -hmm. in a good place now. Mm -hmm. On the day she died, yeah. she communicated with me in the morning. 
I had no idea she was alive. But she wanted something. And she texted me and said, hello, Peggy, can you bring me some soursop leaves? Some? Soursop leaves. And I said, OK, fine. I will do that. I didn't find time to go to the place where I was supposed to get the soursop leaves. Mm -hmm. and Later in the evening, my son saw some, some message mm -hmm. on social media that she was in the hospital. And I said, no, but how? You know? So I quickly took off my phone, and I sent her another message. That was at 18 hours mm -hmm. to say, I will get you the sour soap tomorrow. I have not managed to do it. But then she was to die, like mm -hmm. two, three hours later. You know, it's just, just a testament to we never know the, the time, mm -hmm. the day, mm -hmm. or the hour, mm -hmm. right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, my sister, I wish we had more time mm -hmm. to discuss our sister, mm -hmm. um, Honorable Maureen Monawasa. I, I hope that we can get together over tea and continue this conversation. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to at least bring you all together um, and share a little bit of what you remember and your connection uh, with her. So before we sign off, can we take a moment of silence in honor of our sister? Mm -hmm. Everyone Blessing you all the way, loving you all the way, and missing you all the way. Thank you so much. May the good Lord himself be with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us.